Good morning, everybody. It's Monday. I know you guys are all excited about being Monday, going back to work and all that great stuff. Today, we're going to take a look at the home theater in complete detail. And unfortunately, this video footage was lost somehow. I uploaded it to YouTube after I accidentally deleted it and YouTube butchered it. And so I am shooting this from scratch again. So we're going to take a look at all the components of the home theater and, sh and show you on the screen what it takes to build a room like this. So first of all, this room was a spare bedroom that uh, was never used. So I decided when I had two days off of work that I was going to build myself a nice theater room because I had one in California that had multi-tiered seating. Um, it had... Uh, projector and LEDs and everything else under the sun. So I decided this time in Florida I wanted to build one even though I didn't have the opportunity to do the leveled seating or I didn't really have a you know a big room to do it in or the opportunity to build a room. So let's go over this starting from the front. First of all let's take a look at the screen. So the screen here was made by me and it's actually just the wall and I used a projector calculator and I literally marked off the wall for the size of the projector that I was thinking I was going to get. I left room for the door to open which now of course I don't have a door and I kind of wish the whole screen was moved to the right because it's not even on each side however it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I went ahead and sanded the wall in those areas. So I just took a sanding blocks and I sanded it as best I could. The wall's not 100% smooth. It does have a little bit of drywall texture in it. You might be able to see it right there. It's smoother than that, but it's not 100% smooth. And then I used Lowe's Cinema Screen Valspar paint, which I will put up on the screen now. And I did multiple coats of this. You can still see there is some texture on the wall. Your eyes cannot detect that though from the distance back that we are here. I think it's like 11 feet, 10 or 11 feet from the from recliners the, to the screen there. I put probably four coats. The wall was actually a lighter color before. So it took three or four coats of home cinema screen paint now, if you want to do this legitimately, if you want to do this the right way, you're going to get um, drywall mud and you're going to re-mud this whole wall and then sand it till it's really 100% smooth with no bumps on it. Um, make sure though you get any of the major bumps out because those will show a little bit more. So again, after I painted this three or four coats, then I got the boards measured they're not um what do you call it on the ends they're not mitered they're literally just uh butted up against each other but anyway i painted those black um first so that i didn't have to worry about taping off the wall at all i nailed them up there with uh a finishing nail gun i filled the holes where the nails went painted those black the holes and that was it when you do your projector screen at the top of the screen that should be even with the top of where the bulb is in the projector now the shelf tends to sag a tiny bit so I had to put a few little coins under the projector there to raise the front up just a little bit um, I didn't take into account that that shelf is going to sag just from the a little bit of weight So that is the screen. Now, up front, we have JBL 4406s. So these have a six and a half inch woofer and a tweeter. I've had these speakers for around, I wanna say, 
let's see, so mm, 30 years old. Never had any problems with them except one died. One of them, the crossover died. And I got it professionally repaired because it was worth it. These are back in the day when JBL made amazing quality studio monitors. Um, like the 4411B, I think was the, was the good one. Also, we have an Advent center channel. Now, if you want to go for a very clean look, and I had this in my last theater, you can move everything up to the ceiling and do in-ceiling speakers instead of these fronts there and there. And yes, you can do all in-ceiling, even for the center channel. Mono Price makes a great center channel speaker, or at least they used to. If they still have it, I'm gonna put that up on the screen right now while we're talking. And also, there are a few companies who make speakers that are angled towards you. And I'll put those up on the screen and the link in the description as well. So an Advent center channel speaker. Then moving down, we have the Onkyo VSX 933. So this is a 5.1 or 7.2 or whatever your configuration is going to be receiver. It does support HDR10 and 4K and Dolby Atmos and uh, DTS and a few other pretty cool features. So if you're into Atmos and you have more than four or five, six, seven, eight, ten, or however many speakers you have, um, this supports Atmos. It's a pretty good receiver. I, I have had issues with it though. At the moment, if you don't turn it off every time you're done using it, when, uh, when you come back in, the audio won't work at all and then it's kind of a pain to get it back on. If you switch it off every single time you're done, I, I haven't had another problem with it after that, but it's about, I wanna say three or four years old, maybe three years old now. Um, my Pioneer receiver that I had before, I think one of the video, I think the video is, uh, I can't remember why I got this one. There was something wrong with my other one which I had a few issues with the um, other Pioneer as well as far as the video output goes. VSX 933, link will be in the description there if you'd like to get something similar. They don't make this unit anymore. Um, one thing I will say about Pioneer, they have gone down as far as the quality after Onkyo purchased them or vice versa. I can't remember if Onkyo bought them or they bought Onkyo. I think Onkyo purchased Pioneer. Things like the app have gone down as far as the quality of the app that you use to, you use the, to, if you want to modify it. The one on the VSX in the closet is much, much better, but they don't support it on Android anymore. They've stopped updating it years ago. So there you go. Um, behind that, I wanted a clean look, so I've got the Xbox One S chilling back behind there. It's a nice hidden location. The Xbox One S does 4K, it does HDR10, and so we don't have to say much about that. It also allows you to do media if you want to. So um, yeah, just a regular H Xbox One S. Now below that we have this piece I believe came from Ikea but what's really cool about it is is it has storage so I keep like it's actually that's the external hard drive for the Xbox but I keep any accessories like controllers or remotes or anything I want under there nice storage space of course over at the other side of the room we have the other studio monitor the JBL those are my fronts Moving to the center of the room here, we've got another storage table with two bins under, which you can store the remotes with. I have all the remotes out, so I can explain those to you next. That's a little storage table. On this side of the room, part of the remodel, black receptacles, black 
switch blank plate, which because the fan is controlled with um, the remote and with Alexa. We've got an Echo Show 5. I'll put the link in the description to this. We've got the Echo Show 5 wall mount, flush mount, which actually you cut a hole in your drywall and then you, you need power though. So you can either run power down your wall and out through a receptacle if you want, or you can do what I did and you can pull power off of the switch as long as there's a neutral wire. So I just, um, since this is not a permanent installation, it's not um, illegal to do a receptacle inside of the wall. So I just, I just literally um, pigtailed off the receptacle, off the switch that's in there and used the stock power adapter for this to plug into that. I just um, take a female part of an extension cord and I hardwire that to the switch and then I plug in the Echo Show 5 behind that. Again, Echo Show 5 um, this is a first gen. They are, are on the second generation now. They dropped the headphone jack. So if you're wanting to use this for external audio to feed anything like your home theater system or anything, you will not be able to do that with the new one. You'll have to find a Gen 1 on eBay. I don't, I don't think they even have them on Amazon anymore. Make sure you get Gen 1 if you want the audio output. Otherwise, you're going to have to use Bluetooth. Um, so they dropped the audio jack on the, all the new ones, which is disappointing. Um, I don't know why they would do that when a lot of people like using that for their stereo systems. Black receptacle and wall plate. We'll put that in the description. Moving over here, we just have some little side tables. The closet. Got the black curtains, mainstays curtains from Walmart with a black shower curtain rod holding it to each side of the closet. Link will be in the description. Just got some musical instruments here on the wall, sort of a nice display. And those came from Wish, believe it or not, wish.com. So they were cheap. Moving up here, we got the standard white uh, AC vent register painted matte black with Krylon paint, I believe it was. Krylon matte black paint. Two or three coats of paint on that. Moving back to the surround sound speakers, we've got the two-way six and a half inch surround sound speakers. I will put a similar one on the screen. These are not available anymore. These have been in here for, I don't know, six or seven years. Took them out, removed them from the frame, painted them black with the Krylon paint plus primer. So uh, really for surrounds, you don't need any huge speakers. They, they handle less information and less power. Six and a half is fine. I do buy eight and a half now when I buy in-ceiling speakers, uh, just because I want more bass if, I don't, if I'm using them for music. These are not used for music. Um, so those are six and a half inch, two-way in-ceiling speakers with the wires are run up and over and to the wall plates behind the receiver, which I will show you next. Projector is an Anchor, Cosm uh, Anchor Nebula Cosmos Max. I always left, leave out the Nebula. And it is true 4K native. It has built-in 3D sound with four speakers, which sounds absolutely amazing. Check out my review of that, which is going to be coming out here soon. That is a amazing projector. You will be so happy with this if you get it, I promise you, it's great. It's worth the money for sure. And I can't say enough about it. It does awesome video, awesome audio, got built-in apps. It's way bright enough in this room with uh, the light cut down. 
You could use it outside in the evening or at night, probably not during the day, but I highly recommend it. Moving down to, uh, oh, forgot, we have a floating frosted glass shelf held by these little legs. And I, yes, I do need to get the paint better around the legs. I uh, quickly painted that and it looks like I missed some. But it's a frosted glass floating shelf. If I can find one online, I will put that on the screen now or and or link in the description. So you just put these metal feet in and then they clamp down on the glass and they do a great job. Got my artwork, Adventure Time, Star Wars, Aqua Teen, and boxing. Some of my favorite things that I enjoy watching in the room. We have a double recliner. And this was purchased off of Craigslist. So I do not have a link for this, but it's a double reclining seat. Got the Xbox One controller. Another side table, random little lamps. Um, got the laser star projector going. Got that um, online somewhere, but it's very old, so I won't be able to, probably won't be able to find it. But it is projecting the laser stars onto the ceiling and the nebula and you can actually adjust the nebula and yeah this thing looks awesome in here below that we got the acoustic subwoofer 12 inch powered subwoofer um, I will put a link in the description I think it's a PL 200 it is pretty good um, I've had this for probably eight years and it has amazing sound it's really really low has a lot of power and it's around three hundred dollars i'll link it in the description but i highly recommend this as well i took the time to move it from that corner back here where i have an empty space between where the two couches meet there was plenty of space for this to go right there so the rca cable runs under there and comes around and goes to the back of the receiver here. LED light strip, the Govi RGB IC light strip is run all the way around here. Check out my review of that on the channel. It is smart Wi-Fi enabled, controllable via an app which I will open up on the tablet right now. Get this open. So here's the app. All of my LEDs are here. You can check this out in my review. Left mirror, right mirror. Those are in the bathroom. There's the theater room. So you can go into here, it's connecting. And you can change the scene or color or brightness. You can do custom scenes. For more information on this, I'll put a link in the description. Also check out my review video on the channel. Moving this way, we've got a futon. That also came from Walmart. Just a standard Walmart futon, but the sides um, can be raised and lowered so you can have armrests or it can go flat got my Star Wars pillow of course and it says the first order what home theater room would be wouldn't be complete without a Star Wars pillow on the wall one of my guitars it's a Gibson guitar some more of the instruments and my moon man which actually came off the fan blade uh, fan switches now moving up to the fan this is a standard black fan however it has a smart power controller up in the bell which is very hard to get in because it's a low profile fan this is a lower profile fan than 
standard. Uh, and I did that so that it would not interfere with the picture right here. This fan uses this remote, so there you go. Also, it can be controlled with Alexa, so you can, oh, she's gonna think I'm talking to her. You can actually change the speeds and turn the light off and on. So if you're doing automation and you wanna have it so when you walk in this room, the fan comes on, you can do that, or the lights come on, you can do that using automation. So let's take a look at all the remotes because we didn't look at the remote for the projector in the projector review. This is the remote for the projector. If I can get it to focus. You can see it's a voice remote, a lot like the one for the uh, Fire Stick. This is my tablet, Fire HD 10 Plus. This can go away up in the closet. That is the old remote for the old Epson, which died. This is the remote for the fan. It's got the switch in the middle for the lights. Fan speed up here, which is also controllable by, you know what? I don't want to say the name because she'll wake up, but there's the fan. And you can do a timer on it as well. This is the remote for the receiver, the SX933. However, I am using the Fire Stick to control power and volume on the receiver. You can see here, powered off. So there's the regular Pioneer remote to do everything else if you, if you need to, like change inputs or um, anything else related to that receiver and you don't have the capability on there. Now for some reason I can't get the projector power working on this remote. It is not able to power the projector off and on and I'm not sure why that is. Um, I gotta play with it a little bit more and do some testing. But as of right now this does not power off and on the projector which is kind of annoying. Um, it is programmed for an anchor projector but it does not work for some reason. So yeah that's a look at the entire home theater room and all of the contents if you wanted to build one. I'm going to put the cost, estimated cost, on the screen right now. Now, keep in mind here, ah, one other thing, I'll put the cost up after that. The wall plates, which I did a really bad job on the um, getting them in there straight. The wall plates really need to be painted black. I'm going to do that. I just haven't had a chance to do that yet. But back here we have surround sound speaker jacks using banana plugs that go up through the ceiling. We've got the cable. It's actually a, not a cable anymore. It is actually just a Cat5, Cat6 switch. But when we had cable, that was the feed for the cable. Now it feed, it's going to the cable modem in the other room with Cat5 to feed internet. Oh yes. the the um, fire stick that is connected to this for movies is actually using wired ethernet. So I have that directly to the fire stick. Then there's a RCA set of jacks. Two of them go, there's only two being used and they go to the closet behind me, which is my whole home audio system in case I wanna go back and forth with signals. And then that's the HDMI brush plate. So yeah, um, I will put the estimated price on the screen right now. Keep in mind, I did all of the work here myself. I did not have one single person do any of the work in this room. I did the electrical. I ran the electrical from up in the attic to where it was coming down the wall here. I spliced into it, put a box in the attic, and it goes up to there. I ran the HDMI cable down the wall, and since this is an inner wall, anything you want to do to this wall is easy because there's no fire breaks or insulation in it. If you're working on this outer wall here that's exterior, you then have to worry about fire breaks and insulation, and it's much, much harder. So I did all the work myself, including making the screen, and I have already put the price up that I think that I may have been into. I've got many hours into this. I've got probably six days total um, into it. 
if you count all the little work like putting the fan in and the shelf in and all the painting. So I hope that you guys can make your own home theater room. If you need any advice or if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments, but that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you soon.